The CEBL Summer Series continues. Game number two here today. We have the one and three Niagara River Lions taking on the two and two Fraser Valley Bandits. Welcome to Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario, home of the 2021 Canada Summer Games. Jason Tom here alongside Joe Razzo once again. We have Amy Otterberg, the third member of our crew, continuing to carry us. Amy work in every game here of the CEBL Summer Series, continuing to bring you some great stories from inside the Meridian Center. And today we have the second game, the first one, a defensive matchup that was won by the Ottawa Blackjacks. And here we're going to have an up and down affair, the Fraser Valley Bandits and Niagara River Lions with turnovers, Joe, probably being the name of the game here in game number two. Well, turnovers because Niagara has had the most amount of turnovers and a big part of Fraser Valley's offense is scoring off of turnovers. They've done a great job of put up 108 points off of turnovers already. So that's going to be one of the key things. We're about eight and a half minutes away from game time here. And I think the other big story for the Fraser Valley Bandits, uh, Cameron Forte, who is one of their leading scorers and leading minutes getter here in the summer series, has left the team. The team is allowing him to go after some other opportunities that are out there and it will be a big change for Fraser Valley but what I do like out of it is that we will see more of a Canadian Olu Ashalu will be stepping in to play some big minutes we'll be back as we continue to tee up game number two between the Fraser Valley Bandits the Niagara River Lions you're watching us live on cbcsports.ca and CBC Jet. It was a Saturday Chris was a good dad his water practices not so much. Hey, Chris. Hey, Culligan. Got a water pitcher for the fam. Pretty safe, huh? Uh, well, basic water pitchers are passable. Whereas a Culligan reverse osmosis system can reduce lead, arsenic, pesticide runoff. You realize these have filters? Chris, pour it out. It's not going fast enough. Just, just done with that. When your water's right, so is your world. I wrote that. to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Bandits fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thebandits.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. River Lions fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit riverlions.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Welcome back to St. Catharines, Ontario. The Meridian Center has been our home away from home as the CBL Summer Series is down the home stretch. Let's take a look at the standings updated after today's game where the Blackjacks easily took care of the Hamilton Honey Badgers. Fraser Valley sitting at two and two. They're taking on the River Lions here who are at one and three. And really, this would be a back-breaking loss for the River Lions. They have an opportunity to really control their own destiny. If they win out, they will ensure that they advance on at least to the quarterfinals, Joe. Yeah, they put themselves in a situation where they've got to win out. You've got to get at least two. Three's the number, I think, is the magic number to get you in to the next round. So let's take a look at the keys of the game, starting off with the Fraser Valley Bandits, who came out red hot in this summer series, have cooled off, and now we will need to figure some things out as they move forward. 
Yeah, they play with lots of swag, and win the physical battle is part of that swag. They do a great job of causing turnovers, so they've got to be really aggressive, particularly in the backcourt. They're the ball moving on offense. Without Cam Forte now, you don't have what, you know, may have been a black hole. The ball didn't get moved out of the post position because he was such a so effective scoring in there. So their ball movement through the post and all around is important, and then their gang rebound mentality. Right now, Olu is their only true center on the floor, and Marcus Capers has to play bigger than he is, but they have to rebound as, as a group very well, and that means getting a body on everyone. And how about the Niagara River Lions, Joe, a team that was one of the favorites coming into this one, playing in their home arena and returning many of their same players, but they have struggled as of late. Yeah, they haven't really found their identity. So I think it's important right now that they play with urgency, but they don't panic. And then they've got to defend without fouling. What you'll find is the early fouls for them have really hurt their rotation and their flow. And then they've got to dominate inside. And that could be through the best post matchup, maybe posting up guards, but they've got to be able to score inside, not just be a perimeter three-point team. With more on the River Lions, let's send it over to Amy Audibert, who's alongside Vic Razzo. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Coach, we have our own Coach Razzo in the booth, and today he's said multiple times, failure isn't always fatal. But there are some big implications in this game. So in your own words, the weight of a W today and what it means for your team. I mean, it's it's pretty much do or die for us. At this point, we can still control our own destiny if we can get the next two. If we only get one of the next two, then, you know, we don't control our destiny. And our team went through, went through the ringer a bit for the first three games, played much better last game, and then hoping today's the start of a new tournament for us. Frazier Valley is the highest flying offense. They're averaging 93 points a game, even without Cameron Forte. They feel that they can still put up some points. So talk about the keys in transition defense for you guys. I mean, transition is, is huge with this group. Getting back, getting bodies in front of the ball, stopping the problem and not just getting back to your man is big. Uh, and then knowing where their shooters are because they've got a few guys who are shooting the ball at a very high level. All right, we appreciate your time. Good luck. Thank we'll you. Go back to you, Jason. Thank you, Amy. It's it's interesting when you look at the summer series and the way that the schedule lays out. The River Lions had two days off, came back, and lost a one-point game to the Stingers, who are atop the standings here of the CEBL Summer Series. Now they have one day off and come back and play here, which will be their most important game of the of the entire Summer Series. Well, yeah, they, they put themselves in a situation where they've got to get to two wins. They have to get to two wins, because right now, if they're settled on one, Saskatchewan beat them. So they're sitting in last place. So they've got to start building some momentum in these next two games. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of the times when you're talking about the River Lions, you're talking about their shooting, and they haven't been as hot as we expect. And again, the turnovers have been a huge story for this River Lions squad. And when you take a look at the starting five, as mentioned, a little bit different for Fraser Valley. They got Merrick Klassen, Jahans Menega, Marcus Capers. There's Olu Ashalu, the vet Canadian, stepping in as the man in the middle, and then Junior Kadugan, the emotional leader on the other side. Ryan Anderson, Trey Bell Haynes, Cassius Robertson, Guillaume Bucard, Sam Muldrow, the same starting five that the River Lions went to in their last game, where Daniel Mullings, a high energy Canadian himself, coming off the bench, spreading things out for the River Lions a little bit. And then, of course, the officials for today's games, who have the wonderful job of mixing together the Elam ending along with FIBA rules. Kevin Moore, Tony Turnbull, Vernon Bovell taking care of the electronic whistles here today. The Fraser Valley Bandits will be in the dark blue with orange and white trim. The River Lions in the home white with light green and blue. And a reminder that the official game ball of the CEBL is Spalding. Get your new CEBL official replica ball today by visiting CEBL.ca, complete with the signature from Commissioner Mike Morreale. Joe, first one was a battle, and this one, I think, is going to be an exciting matchup up and down with two teams that are going to be laying it all on the line. I think absolutely on that. You're absolutely right on it. And one of the keys for Fraser Valley has been Jahens Menega. And he's been doing a great job now in the starting lineup, been a very consistent scorer, shooting the ball real well. And he's got a brother who's an assistant coach at Fraser Valley, Willie Menega, 
who's also the head coach at Brock University. Yes, Willie Managa, I know him well. It's a little brotherly, probably uh, love chat going uh, side to side in the, uh, in the group chats, I'm sure. It will be interesting to see how the bandits come out here. This definitely is a brotherhood, a bunch of guys who know each other very, very well. And seeing Merrick Klassen in the backcourt to start things off alongside Junior Kadugan. Just mixing things up a little bit, Joe. But yeah, absolutely. And one of the things when you lose a player like Cam Forte, you've got all this veteran experience on the floor. And the guys can handle it. Junior Kadugan, Merrick Klassen, Marcus Capers, Olu Ashley. That's a lot of experience. That they've been in situations like this before. In the middle, it'll be the River Lions with an advantage with the size of Sam Muldrow, who wins the tip. And it's Trey Bell Haynes finding Ryan Anderson. Muldrow gives it back to Anderson. Bucard down low, posting up the low block. Bucard gets to the baseline. Reverse layup is good. Good start, 2-0. So they're playing through a matchup they want right now. And Guillaume Bucard is a very good post-up player, particularly when he faces up and he takes you. Kadugan to Klassen. Drops it off to Ashalu. Can't get the roll, gets his own rebound. Doesn't even need to jump to clean it up. And he stays with it real well there. It's good offensive rebound by Olu. Ashalu is a late addition to the squad. The Bandits. Ended up without one of their imports. Each team is allowed three. Back the other way, Klassen with the steal. He finds Ashalu. Ashalu doesn't have the same lift that he used to, but he just knows how to get it done with the tools that he has. In that, in that transition there with the steal, Olu's separation from Sam Muldrow allowed him to get to the wing and get open on the pass off. And you know what you're getting with Olu. Olu's going downhill to the basket, going to be around the rim, not going to look to shoot a pile of outside shots, but he is just going to work his way in. Good post-up player and very good at getting to the free throw line. Two teams that are evenly matched in a lot of different ways. Again, Sam Muldrow being the size differential on the side of the River Lions, but he plays a different type of game. He's kind of a rim to three point line big. And yeah. it seems like he's been still battling to kind of find his his wind in this summer series as well. Sam has shows his size in the half court on defense. And there is Muldrow behind the three point line. He got Ashley to bite and drops two. That's what happens because he can shoot that outside, sh outside shot. You got to close out. 4-3 here in the early going for the River Lions. Classes pass. Hit something and went out of bounds. They say it went off Ashley turnover. River and, Lions get it back. And I think what Niagara was going to do on a lot of those ball screens, because Olu's not a threat to step out and pop, they're going to try to keep Sam Muldrow at home. A lot of teams will be watching this game, especially the Rattlers. Very, very interested to see the result of this one. Bell Haynes off the Muldrow screen. Klassen does a good job getting around that. Muldrow from range, front rim, no good. Capers, defensive rebound. And Fraser Valley's happy with that because if they get Niagara to settle with outside threes, and that'll, that'll play to their defensive strategy. Klassen running off multiple screens. Mark Klassen. Man, he is so good. Two point guards here on both teams, really hard to speed him up. And the thing about Fraser Valley is they've got two point guards on the floor all the time with Junior and Merrick when they play together. Bucard, sorry, Robertson to Muldrow. Thought about it, and Ashley just took it out of him. Muldrow saved it, but could not get it back in bounds. Yeah. Bad decision turnover there. Either you're going to shoot it or you're not, and Sam's not putting it down the ground. It's not a good decision. In the backcourt right now, we bring it up is Junior Kadugan. Hand off to Klassen. Klassen to Menega. He runs off the Ashley screen. He finds Kadugan. Kadugan. Bounces it around, can't get it to go. Still 5-4 here for Niagara. 
That is Edgem in the game. Ashlew jumped in to break up that entry pass. You can join the conversation, and you might as well. The CBL has been trending across Canada. You can join us by using the hashtag our game on all the social media platforms, only some of which are attended by Joe Rassel and myself. Trey Bell Haynes gets it to go. Magma did a good job of getting the ball on the other side of the floor there, and that back screen forced communication they did, that didn't happen. Class and up top. Oh, and he is wiped out. Big block by Edgem. Oh, Robertson, no good. The bench was screaming for a travel. Menega, pushing, takes it right at Bell Haynes. He did a good job of squaring up. Offensive foul. And a real important foul there because Trey Bell already has one. So you gotta be sure when you're gonna take the charge like that. Trey Bell Haynes working on Klassen. Robertson back to Bell Haynes. Working to pick and roll with Edgem. Drive, kick, Bucard, good execution, and Bucard makes it count for range. Solid execution, good pass, good decision by Ryan Edgem on that. Kaduga. Foul line jumper is good. Good defense, but Kadugan elevated for two. Good solid deep, big time shot for Junior. Used the screen real well and, and set himself up for the jumper. Bell Haynes again. As we mentioned, back and forth affair so much so that I believe the score bug may be off. So we are going to update you at the next time out of where we are at. It doesn't really matter. It's a close game that's all that you should be caring about right now. Foul down low on Edgem. Fraser Valley did a real good job of, of running transition on a made basket. They got scored upon and all of a sudden had advantage early. They push it constantly. Ashalou checking out. Same with Klassen. Manuel Uatua checking in for the River Lions, as does Daniel Mullings. Vivier in the game for the Bandits. And this is a small lineup for Fraser Valley where they're gonna ask Marcus Capers to play a little bit bigger and he's a great athlete and he can do that. There's Kyle Johnson. Jumper is good. He is a very important player for and, Fraser Valley. And for him to knock that down early like that, telling you he's come off a groin injury and he's done a real good job. Dugan and Uatua working it one on one. De Vivier steps up. Edgem's pass telegraphed, knocked out of bounds by Johnson. He's active, fresh off the bench is Johnson. Fraser Valley's doing a good job defensively of keeping the ball on one side of the floor and not letting the flow go Niagara's way. Oh, nice cut by Mullings off the baseline. And good read by Uatua, the U sports player who waited four seconds to make that play. Oh, Kadugan behind the back, then gets it to Devivier. De Johnson from range, no good. Oh, I told you it'd be a back and forth affair up and down. This is CEBL basketball right here. Mullings, Bucard working on Kadugan. Bucard would love to live down here, but he turns it over. Menega with the steal, pushing the other way. Ooh, a bit of a slip down low. Robertson helps up his opponent. Good sportsmanship there. Man, blink and we are through the first half of the first quarter, Joe. And that's exactly in that last play. What hurt Niagara and what's been really helpful to Fraser Valley? Turnover to a score. You are watching the CBL Summer Series live on CBC Gem and cbcsports.ca. We'll be back to St. Catharines after a short break. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. 
Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Follow the Fraser Valley Bandits on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Bandits have to offer. Follow the Niagara River Lions on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the River Lions have to offer. Welcome back, Joe, exactly what we expected, back and forth. And let's introduce Amy Otterberg to the broadcast. Amy? Yeah, thanks, Jason. You see Jahan's taking a couple free throws right now. we got to go back to his college career just a little bit. You know, he was a three-year captain at Creighton. He finished with 206 career three-point made, six all-time. But maybe my favorite thing that I read, his nickname, the Canadian Red Bull, because of the amount of energy he brought, his team surely needs out today. Guys? Thank you, Amy. I would echo those sentiments, especially in the early going here as the River Lions doing all their work in the paint. They started five of five from in the lane, Joe. And right there, they just drew a foul from in the lane. Ryan Edgem went for the rebound and forced Kyle Johnson. And we said early in the game, one of the, well, the keys was that they have to score inside. Inbound with 14 on the shot clock. Uatua up top, Daniel Mullings again coming off the bench for the River Lions now. He gets it down to his former New Mexico State teammate, Tyrone Watson, gets it back to Mullings. Mullings, good elevation. Sorry, Dorian Pinson, my mistake from downtown. And a nice pass out there by Tyrone Watson to read the situation and find the open man. Pinson, a very important member of this River Lions squad. As he goes, often do they go. Capers fouled. Pinson, a little late getting down there. Yeah, straight straight high ball screen and roll. And so on that, there's got to be five guys got to rotate, so the tag man has to be there. And that was the conversation I've seen right there. I think Edgem kind of put his hand up and said, that was my bad. Pinson tried to bail him out. Guess the positive is, didn't result in a possible three-point play. Sends him to the line to earn two. Yeah, but often my bad results in two. <laughs> One of the worst things for the coaches to hear, my bad. It doesn't make it okay. <laughs> now here's something I, I, I'm not a fan of. When you don't put anybody in the free throw line, you allow mm. the defensive team to swat the ball off the rim. I realize you can go back and set your defense. Watson no good, Edgem trying to get on the glass, but it's the Bandits that come away with it. They are pushing, Classen waiting. Smart move, the trailer would have swatted that away. He's watched by Uatua, who has seen his minutes increase as the summer series continues. Take no good, Watson always creating problems defensively. River Lions got numbers, they take advantage, Edgem easy to. And there's a situation, the first big running down the floor. Not only did he run down the floor, he got a nice seal. He made himself visible to the ball. Merrick Klassen pushing on Uatua. Setting up the offense. No give and go with DeVivier. Capers sets the screen. Klassen looking for DeVivier. Very few people can pass it like Klassen. Three ball from the corner, no good. I'll tell you this, the Bandits end up on the floor time and time again. The River Lions are up for this game. Foul called, I believe, on... Duvivier and a reminder you can pick up the latest gear from your favorite team exclusively from New Era, the official merchandise partner of the CEBL and its seven teams from across Canada. You can visit CEBL.ca and click 
on shop. I do have to say that sitting in front of me right now is the Fraser Valley Bandits hat. It may go missing by halftime. Up top, Watson. He finds Grandy Glaze getting his first burn of the game. He gets bumped off, no call. Refs are letting him play here, Joe, I like it. The big man to push off. Oh, Nix! Oh, he back rimmed the dunk. That's the third missed dunk I've called, Joe. Not happy. Tavarian Nix is very important right now. He's the guy I think Kyle Julius feels is their wild card. Real good athlete. Well, I think the Bandits will live with Grandy Glaze taking that jumper. Oh, absolutely. Any day early. early in the clock. Vivier. Working on Watson, those are two big bodies. Classen finds Nix. He has to kick it out. Johnson shoots it. Great defense. Did he call glass? I don't think so, but the three's gonna count, and that's a big time shot. Cuts it to three. Late in the clock. Ooh, lots of contact. I don't know if these uh, electronic whistles are working. Oh, and another missed bunny at the rim for the Bandits. That's four points they've given away. Ooh, a Tua out of control, back and forth. Johnson the other way. He misses. Nix put back. Kyle Julius is about to go out there and start a layup drill so they didn't start making these baskets. But it's they're running in transition. They're scoring on a second chance opportunity. They're taking advantage of mistakes by Niagara, turnovers in transition, not just because of spacing. Oh, Pinson finds a cutting with two, a great pass to Mullings. Watson from range. No good, but good ball, move, ball movement by the River Lions. Whew, gotta catch my breath, Joe, under a minute to go. And Fraser Valley is happy with that. They've got non-shooters taking shots for Niagara. That's good defense. The Vivier. Ooh, that looked good. He flicked a switch and counted from range. The worst closeout you can have is when you're 95% there and you give the guy the shot. Uatua, 12 second difference, game clock, shot clock. Pinson, down low, Watson. He's put up an awful lot of shots here in the first quarter. Great dump off to Glaze, extra pass. Mullings could be big, no good. Rebound, Klassen, 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Two point lead for the Bandits. Jahens Menegat cannot pass that up. Mullings, defensive rebound, two seconds to go. They got a push. Watson launches. Woo! Tell your friends we got a game and you can watch it live on CBC Gem and CBCSports.ca. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made this stable. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cap. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next.
Welcome back inside the Meridian Center in St. Catharines where Fraser Valley has the two point edge on the River Lions after the first quarter. And Niagara, well, it was Dorian Pinson's voice in their huddle, right? He told them to slow down. They feel that they can get layups at the rim. Fraser Valley, their game plan is working really well. They knew with Forte, other guys were gonna have to step up. All eight guys that have seen the floor have scored nobody more than five points. It's very balanced, guys. And you hit it all on the head there. And Joe, you wanna add to that? Yeah, I think decision making is a really important. All decisions, all decisions have consequences. And with Fraser Valley, you make bad shots, bad turnovers, they're gonna score. Wow, that was two open baseline passes leading to a jumper from Johnson. He just couldn't get that one to go. His Grandy Glaze at the SWAT on the defensive end. He now has it, fires it out to Trey Bell. Haynes had it halfway down before it rolled out to Vivier for Fraser Valley. Gets it back from Nix. Nix laid the body, called it a moving screen. I like the way Fraser Valley moves the basketball and gets themselves in the half court real quickly, mm -hmm. where Niagara is pounding the ball and pausing it. Pinson inbounds Trey Bell Haynes with Jabs Newby out there guarding him. Newby didn't get an awful lot of burn to start the summer series, but seeing his minutes increase, Blaze takes it hard. Ooh, I think oh. they could have called that a defensive goaltending. Looked like DeVivier pulled on the mesh. Yeah, you can hit the rim. <laughs> Just not the mesh. And I see the River Lions out here on the perimeter. Shot goes up, and they're looking to, to, to run transition. You got to rebound first. If you don't rebound, you can't run. Classic. Knicks. Wing three. No good. Fraser Valley was getting a lot at the rim, now have uh, moved to the perimeter game and have not been able to score here in the second quarter. Bucard out to Bell Haynes. Bucard gets it back. And Vivier just bothered him enough and it goes out of bounds off of Bucard. Fraser Valley being physical has affected Niagara tremendously. We got guys on the court, it passes like that. If the officials don't call it, you gotta play through it. And we're just, there's been a situation here where Fraser Valley's done a great job of imposing their will and their physicality on Niagara. Classen switched off for Cadugan, who's now on the floor running the point. Kyle Johnson working on Bucard, who is a defensive monster. Again, Nick setting the screen, rolls to the rim, but they look him off. Cadugan getting bothered by Grandy Glaze. Nice bounce pass to, to DeVivier. He is shooting threes well, and that is important for Fraser Valley. Great lift and great find by Junior Cadugan. The ball never stopped. There's no pause. Mullings to Glaze. He puts it up. Back rim trying to get on the glass, taps it out. Fraser Valley on the run again. Oh, Johnson bounce pass to Cadugan. No good. No foul, Mullings back the other way, and that's good, back and forth, up and down, exactly what we expected out of this matchup. 23-20, Fraser Valley still up three. Fraser Valley played last night, are playing with much more energy than Niagara right now. But how will that carry as the game progresses? That will be something to watch, as Kadugan can't get it to go, lays the rebound, Bucard back the other way. He finds Glaze. Another shot from range. Grandy Glaze is probably going to find himself on the bench soon enough. Man, decisions and consequences. A bad shot is like a turnover. Ooh, DeVivier just got wiped out of bounds. And now the River Lions have a two on O oh, timeout called by Kyle Julius. Two minutes into the second quarter, things not going his way. And uh, Victor Rasso having a little chat with Grandy Glaze. We will be back after a short break. 23-22, we got a good game here on CBC Gem and cbcsports.ca. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. 
Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products, so you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah! Spend two nights in Ottawa and get $100 spending money on us. Dinner and drinks? It's on us. Or outdoor fun? It's on us. So relax. It's on us. Spend two nights and get $100. A mark of legacy, a mark of our game. Spalding is the official basketball partner of the CEBL. Get your replica CEBL game ball now at CEBL.ca and take our game to your courts. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Welcome back to the Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario. Coventry is the official transportation partner of the CEBL Summer Series. Getting players to and from the Meridian Center throughout the Summer Series. Coventry getting it done on the roads and a good block there. Active are the River Lions defensively. Mullins spins, no basket. Consistently the Bandits on the run to Vivier no good, he has had it going from range, his first miss from three-point land. Fraser Valley's had four offensive rebounds, a smaller team, and do a real good job of guys coming from the perimeter. Cassius Robertson has been quiet here in the first half. Drive, drop off to Mullings, Cadugan swallows him up. Robertson gets it back, he's got Olu Ashwell on him, takes it to the baseline, and we got a charge. Cadugan stepped in, looked like he might have been inside the Half circle, but he gets the call. The lack of ball boot of Niagara is allowing the Fraser Valley Bandits to get up and build their defense. You've got to go offensively. You've got to put balls from side of court to the other side of the court. Reversing it, going through the post, kicking it out, but just stagnant is making it easy for Fraser Valley to guard Niagara. Cadugan, the Vivier on the baseline. Great defense from Bell Haynes. Cadugan. Two men got no good to Vivier and Bell Haynes colliding underneath the rim, battling for the rebound. It's going to go the way of Niagara. And I'm at Fraser Valley. I'm excited because we're getting good shots by our good shooters. They're just missing right now. They're not shooting well from range, but they're making up for it with their defensive ability to step in for steals and, as you had mentioned, stepping in for some charges as well. That's different than missing shots because the defense is real good. Yeah, shots are going to come and back the other way. These are the turnovers that hurt the most. That was Robertson called for Offensive foul. foul, referees called him for pushing off on the screen. That's just losing your mental focus. To Vivier, inbounding to Kadukin. Menega, hand off to Newby. He lost the defender, but has it sent back by Edgem. Edgem has been very good playing his role so far in this one. Kadugan high over Bukar. Second chance basket. Newby misses the shot. Nobody covers down on it. Guys are on the perimeter for Niagara. Newby gets a second chance. Another offensive rebound for Fraser Valley. Fraser Valley just outworking them right now. Oh, Mullings lost Kadugan. Ashalu got hit down low. He's slow getting up. Just over the midway point of the second quarter. This is fast game. And we have Thought we were going to have our media time out there, Joe, just over the midway point. They head faked me a bit, Joe. Bell Haynes working on Classen. Mullings wide open. No good. Defensive rebound. 
Malcolm de Vivier has been very active. And there's been no crispness on Niagara's offense. It's just like a very pedestrian, casual moves. Ashalou to Klassen. Klassen not speeding up. Six on the shot clock. Kick ball, and it's going to go the River Lions' way. Good defense on the ball. Ryan Anderson there. And that's what the River Lions have needed. They needed a change for the momentum, and it's most often done on the defensive end. Four. 20 to go in a very close game. Anderson. Kadugan hounding him. Edgem working on Ashley. Big collision. Edgem is looking much more effective in this game. Yeah, but if you don't move the basketball, it just makes everything the one-on-one -on -one situation so much diff more difficult. Classic loses it. Trey Bell Haynes coming up with it. He has Mullings on his left, keeps it himself, teardrop. You should just trademark that, Trey Bell Haynes. Money. Tough basket on a three on two there. De Vivier, handoff, Menega. De Vivier. Nice drop off, Ashalou. Foul on Bucard. And a reminder, as part of the CEBL social justice work, you will hear players, coaches, and staff speak out against racism. Racism is not our game, is featured at each baseline and on the back of warm-up shirts worn by all teams as a reminder of the work we all need to do for equality in Canada. I love the fact that Fraser Valley has been physical, getting to the ball, getting to the free throw line, finding their big guy, rolling to the basket, being real strong. And you look at the stats, Niagara hasn't shot a free throw. And this, is, this has happened consistently with them and it's been hurting them. The fact that they're playing with so much finesse, and not physical like the teams that they're playing against. You know Fraser Valley is going to bring that physicality in every game, and Ashalou is pure from the line on both to get the Bandits back in the lead. Something tells me every time I look up at that scoreboard, Joe, it is going to be a trade-off of one to three points either way. Bell Haynes waiting for the edge of the screen. Bell Haynes gets into the paint. Kick out, Bucard, no good. Bell Haynes on the glass. Ashalou hits the floor, and once again, the Bandits come out with it. De Vivier, hard dribble, off glass, basket and the bump. Malcolm De Vivier is a tank. We welcome those watching today's game on Twitch. Thousands of fans from around the world use this exciting platform on Saturday to be a part of the CEBL action. We hope you enjoy what you're seeing live from St. Catharines, Ontario here in Canada to everybody in the Twitch universe. Well, I'm j I just can't say enough how the physical play of Fraser Valley is dominating this game, just dominating the game. Daniel Mullings, I think, got busted open there. Well, that was a situation, loose ball on the floor. You've got people diving for balls that they can't get, pull themselves out of position, and you give up transition. De Vivier just buried his forearm into Mullings' cheekbone. Mullings is now over getting looked at. He's a warrior, he will get back out there, I am sure. 2.55 to go here in the first half. Bell Haynes dominating the ball, gets swallowed up, and Kadugan comes out with it. He has Menega on the wing. Jahens, no good, gets his own rebound. Shooters know where their misses are going. He gets it back, and it'll be 11 on the shot clock. Bandits ball on the baseline. They are killing Niagara on the board, and Niagara perimeter players won't cover down and rebound. Kadugan will be inbounding. Thirty to twenty-six, Fraser Valley in the lead. Corner three, top of the backboard. Menega saying, "I don't miss that bad. Yeah, Must have been foul. It may have slipped. It looked like his feet weren't set, and it looked like the ball was coming out of his hands." Bell Haynes brings it over midcourt. 
Anderson has not gotten a shot off, I don't believe, in this game. He's been doing well defensively, though. Skip pass to Bucard. Bucard gets into his office on the low block. Faces up. Fade away, no good physicality of the Bandits, creating all sorts of problems for the River Lions. And a great read by Marcus Capers there, who thought Guillaume, gave Guillaume space, knew he played him off the dribble. Ashalu and Edgem. These two very similar players. Oh, Lou Ashalu. I didn't know he had that in his bag. Confidence right now is oozing. Wow. For Fraser Valley. Okay, Olu. Bell Haynes to Pinson. Oh, falls right in the lap of Edgem. Bell Haynes is getting beat up every time he gets there. And following today's CEBL doubleheader, you'll want to stick around for a special edition of CEB Life, presented by Ward One Studios. A behind the scenes feature on Honey Badger's guard, Dwayne Notice, following the buzzer, final buzzer of today's game. Look at Junior Cadugan. Getting right in Bell Haynes' grill, but Trey just does not play with any of that. Now one of the things when you're getting pressure put on you on the baseline like that, just step back a little further if you're the inbounder. Give yourself a better angle. Anderson needs to see one go through. He airs it out. Let's call it a pass. Muldrow, same spot, no good. River Lions can't stay this cold from range for too long. It's going to change eventually. Cadugan, pull up three. No good. And Bell Haynes comes down with it, spinning across the midcourt line. But again, it's the dribble. It's the dribble. You lose advantage because you had transition. Five on force transition. You've got to move it with the pass. People have to be visible to it. Oh, Anderson, no good. Right now, Niagara is trying to have their shot be their offense rather than their offense getting people some shots right now. It's stagnant and it looks ugly. Yeah, I think they're under 20% right now from three. And Kyle Julius calling a timeout at the last possible second. A six point lead for Fraser Valley and Joe off the top. We said that Cameron Forte being lost from this bandit squad can go one of two ways, but I mean, right now, this team is really playing for each other. Absolutely, and they're playing to their strengths and they're forcing Niagara to play to their weaknesses. That's a super combination when you've got, when you're, when you're working that. That's your scout report. That's why you put a scout together and people have to buy in. Their, out, their physical play is dominating this game and their rebounding and running out has been very, very effective. And they haven't shot the ball as well as they usually shoot it. So Niagara's lucky that they haven't made their open shots. On the other hand, Niagara somewhere has to find this urgency. They've got to start moving the basketball and making Fraser Valley play. And they've got to stop being a finesse team. They've got to get the ball inside. The River Lions shooting a very low percentage from range, something that you don't expect will continue with the amount of shooters that they have on the squad. But the Bandits up six. Really, the way that they've outworked Niagara feels like they should be up more. They do still have the ball right now with 103 to go, have at least two more possessions to go here in the first half. You're talking about a defensive 26 points, that's a great defensive performance by Fraser Valley. Menega. Finds Capers. Down low, Ashley, he's working on Muldra. Kick out, De Vivier. almost lost, Pinson there. De Vivier, tough take, Capers! Stick back, jam, two hands to be safe. And again, perimeter players not putting bodies on people. Free lane, and one of the best offensive rebounders in this series is Marcus Capers. Watson on the baseline. Muldra. Both those guys have struggled with their shot in this game. 0 for 3 to start was Watson. So seeing that one go through is a positive. We just got 15 seconds left in the quarter. It is a six point lead for Fraser Valley. The Bandits sitting at two and two. Muldrow with the steal. Bell Haynes has it now, two seconds to go. Keeps it himself, can't get it to go. 
The River Lions just had nothing go their way in that first half, but they are down just six. Both teams have positives and negatives to take from this first half, I think. Well, that at the end of half would have been a huge positive for Niagara because it would have been one of the few, few times. The only time they've actually scored in transition has been off of turnovers. But Fraser Valley, consistent, staying with the game plan, winning that half, only up six, but dominated that half. And for everything that did not go the River Lions' way, they are still down just two possessions. And we knew that this game would be decided in this second half. Very back and forth affair, as I mentioned. And one of the players who had it going in that first half in the early going was Malcolm DeVivier, and he is now joining Amy Otterbird. Amy? Thanks, Jason. Malcolm, you're pacing your team with nine points in the half, but you've had to adjust quickly without Cameron out there. So how did what, what did you guys do to adjust? Um, coach just told us to use our, you know, our size to our advantage, our speed, so get up the floor, push the ball, and just take our time and execute and get to our spots. So I think whenever we get take our time, get to our spots, and play off those, we always get good shots. It's a solid half. It's a six-point game. How do you create some separation in the second half? Um, we just have to. I think we have to pick up the pressure a bit, rebound a little bit better, and then you know get out and run. We have we have an advantage of speed. You know we're a small team, so we have to run out and get out on the open floor. So I think once we do that, we'll, we'll start to blow the lead open. We appreciate your time, Malcolm. Right, thank, thank you very much. And we'll be right back for more CEBL Summer Series halftime show. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends that won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming now. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old oh, friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching now from the west side of that old town, but there's no show till I go down to the open mic. Show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you gonna find out. Been blowing up from the underground, and they stay Stepping on a landmine now, and he knows it's my time now. Coming up, I wanna climb now. Everybody claim they've been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out. Okay, I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So and so is popping, man. I skip him like he leg day. Kick it like I'm Pele. I never care what they say. Put myself on Spotify, so every day my payday. That realness, don't feel this, but I've been sick. That illness, I've been fresh like Will Smith since '94, man. I built this. Stressed out, ex out, missed calls from my ex now, but I'm staying focused. In the lab, baby, I don't need your cause or your text now. God say the boy blessed now. Who am I to say Rondo? And the way that I sell ticks, they've been calling me Rondo. 23 in my prondo, finna ball like Lonzo. Go and tell everybody talking stage, better be in that convo, uh. Exactly the type of game we expected. Just a six point lead at half. Fraser Valley up on the River Lions. Fraser Valley at two and two. The River Lions one and three. Really a big, big game for both of these squads as we head into the home stretch of the CEBL Summer Series. And coming up at halftime, we have a review of yesterday in the CEBL. Amy and Mike Morreale sit down for a little chat, and then Amy will interview head coach. Kyle Julius will go over the keys of the game that Joe talked about off the top. And then halftime stats presented by Bet Chris. You are watching live on cbcsports.ca, CBC Gem app. And we will be back with halftime in just a few minutes. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course the goalie. But lately I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use. Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products, so you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah! Spend two nights in Ottawa and get $100 spending money on us. Dinner and drinks? It's on us. Or culture and sightseeing? It's on us. 
So relax, it's on us. Spend two nights and get $100. Welcome to PayWorks. We're payroll, HR, and time and absence management experts. So whether your business has thousands of employees or just one, let us show you how we're different. We're PayWorks, and we're doing business to business, person to person. It's time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Bandits fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thebandits.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. River Lions fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit riverlions.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. How you doing? How are things? You know, it's the ugly part of the game, like I told our guys, it's the part that none of us like, but at the same time, it could for it. Alex Johnson got stopped up into the paint. And covers the There's Johnson on the inside. So 14, 14. Deontay Weber. Look at the handle of Deontay Weber. Are you Cody John on the drive? Cody John high glass and in. Timeouts. Timeouts. Weber! And he ends the game for Hamilton. Score, rebounder. Long pass for Kamba by Xavier Moon. Good vision by Moon. Stopped by Travis Daniels. Here's Moon again. No, Cody Clark was playing for Alberta. And here's Xavier Moon on the steal. And he's got in the corner now. And there's Kimmy Ose. Best imports that work together in Travis Daniel. Daniels again. Getting the job done on defense. And there's Baker. No way. Jordan Baker does it. Daniels again. Get the job done on defense, and there's Baker! No way! What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made this stable. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cap. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next.
Follow the Fraser Valley Bandits on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Bandits have to offer. Follow the Niagara River Lions on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the River Lions have to offer. COVID pandemic, but the CEBL has been able to do something really special. Have you had a chance to reflect on that yet? Well, it, it's funny because, you know, I, I don't think we set out to be the first, nor did we set out to, to be the trailblazer. And I'm, I'm happy we did both because we worked hard at it. And everything that we're doing and showcasing and learning is what I can share now with other pro leagues or either other amateur sports, which, you know, quite frankly, probably need it more than the rest of us. So we still have a ways to go. Let's not kid ourselves. We got to stay safe, remain safe. But everything, all the protocols we put in place, all the kind of advances in, in whether it's automatic TV or the electronic whistles or the safety protocols, they we're leading the way. And, you know, I, I'm happy with it. I'm proud of it. And everybody's following the protocols, and that's probably most important. You know, the way that the league has come across the competition level especially has just been through the roof. And, and I think, you know, people have noticed it from different parts of the country that maybe didn't have a team last year or maybe didn't follow their team last year. And they come to watch and say, OK, this is some darn good basketball. And that organic growth is really incredibly important because, you know, we can put on all the bells and whistles, but until people buy into it and then they start sharing it, that's really when, you know, we hit the lottery and, and we're on the way there. We've got a lot of Canadian yeah. coaches and they seem to be really young, brilliant minds. Is that kind of the trend the CVL wanted to get or what are your thoughts on the coaches? It's we're an all encompassing league that that is there to either showcase and or develop people. And that means coaches, statisticians, broadcasters, players, everybody. So if we didn't exist, none of these 250 people that are involved in this would be able to, to do what they're doing right now. So we're really excited about that opportunity that we've created, not only on the court, but off the court. Well, welcome back to our halftime. About four minutes and 20 seconds left till we get back to game action. And when you talk about the first half, Joe, a lot of things probably said in that halftime in both different locker rooms between their coaches and the players. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, Fraser Valley, they're talking about staying to their plan and doing a real good job and staying physical and keep going at it. And they're talking about, you know, moving the basketball and, they're, and they've done a good job of it. On the other end, you know, Niagara, they've got to find some personality. Uh, you know, they've been held to terrible numbers, 15% from the three. And it's great Fraser Valley defense, but also it's who's shooting the ball. And, Absolutely. And you, your shot can't be the offense. Your offense has to be shot. And when that happens, defense wins. And when it comes down to it, holding them to under 30 points, Kyle Julius now joins Amy Otterberg. Amy? Thanks, Jason. Coach, you guys come in averaging 25 points a game in transition, in fast break. Right now you have one, so how can you shift back to that style of play? We actually had a lot of good looks. We were just talking about it, how many open shots we had. We missed a few layups at the rim. The game's kind of in our pace. It's really low scoring. The shooting percentages are, are really low on both teams, but it's, it's kind of our pace. I feel okay about it. You have a pretty good scoring balance right now, but you need a couple more guys to step up big time. In this particular matchup, who do you need more from? A little bit little bit of everybody. I thought we were bad in the pick and roll. I thought we were rushing. I think we played fast, but we rushed, right? We want to play fast, but we want to play under control. I, I mean, we just got to settle in and make, make a few shots, see a few go in. But I like what I saw in the half. Always, we appreciate your time. Thank Coach, you. Thank you. Good luck. We'll go back to you guys. Thank you, Amy. Two things that stood out to me there. I feel pretty good about it. When you hear that come from Kyle Julius, that is a ringing endorsement for your squad. And, and it's really important the way he presents it is because when you have a player leave who's such a big part like Cameron Forte, we have the forming, storming, and norming. And his team has normed, and he knows that they're still developing this new team without Cam. And so he's done a real good job of handling that and taking the successes from what happened in that half. Well, let's talk about those keys of the game that you uh, had for Fraser Valley off the top. And when it comes down to it, they've been able to execute their game plan uh, pretty well. Well, they've won the physical battle, no doubt. That's just been their ball movement on offense, and they do it in transition. They move, they spread it out, and then the gang rebound. 
They're, they're leading by, by seven boards on a bigger uh, Niagara team right yeah. now, and it's the offensive rebounds that they're getting. On the Niagara side of things, really nothing went their way in that first half. Well, simple things, just like with playing with urgency. The slower you make the game, better it is for Fraser Valley, like Kyle just said. So they're not playing, they're not moving the basketball. And then they're fouling. You know, they're defending without fouling, but they, got, they haven't been to the free throw line yet. And then they got to dominate inside, which didn't happen at all, except for the first possession of the, of the, of the uh, first half. As you mentioned, Fraser Valley winning the rebound battle. They're a plus seven. Everything else fairly normal. The difference being, when field goal percentage is 35 and under, that is Fraser Valley's game. Niagara River Lions, they cannot win basketball games shooting that sort of percentage. No, not at all. And, and if you look at the difference in rebounds, it was the offensive rebounds. Yes. It was the eight offensive rebounds. You know, Olu getting his own shot, Newby getting his own rebound, going up and scoring again. Those are the ones that made the big difference. Those halftime stats were presented by Bet Chris. And, you know, the two teams combined for 62 points, so not a ton of highlights when you think about it. But, I mean, the grind it out, battle it out game that this has been is exactly what we expected with so much on the line when it comes to the standings between these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. And this is one that's really important because a Fraser Valley win gives them three. Yeah. And they're, they're in. Yep. This is puts them in. Where a Niagara win gives them two, and now they with, tied with Fraser Valley and puts them in the hopper with everybody else. Yeah, if the River Lions lose this game, they drop to one and four. Now all of a sudden, they need Saskatchewan to lose both of their remaining games unless Niagara, and sorry, as even if Niagara pulls out a win, they'll be tied with Saskatchewan and they don't have the tie break. Absolutely, absolutely. They are in tr they are deep trouble if they don't put, pick up this second half. Well, everything on the line right now for the Niagara River Lions. How will they respond? coming out of the halftime break. They have the ball first, which is always a positive when you're trailing. Robertson, watched by Menega, into the corner. Anderson, an air ball. It must be that Anderson. corner. For him to shoot an air ball and Menega to hit the backboard. Good call, Joe. Stay away from that corner of the court if you're a three-point shooter. Menega gets it back up top. Klassen gets hit by Anderson. Foul called. Klassen with a little look towards Anderson. Anderson showed a little bit of hustle there, tried to take the charge on the pass off, and then got himself back up and became part of the play. Things are getting a little bit chippy out there between these two squads. His first foul, team's first Klassen inbounds, shot clock resetting to 14. Capers to Kadugan, Menega waiting for the Ashalu screen. Menega back up to Klassen who popped up to the top of the three point line. He tried to put it right into the bread basket of Ashalu, but even though the River Lions were empty on their first offensive possession, 24 second shot clock violation just with the doctor. And already. what they did there is they covered down on it so they couldn't make that interior pass to Olu and Sam Muldrow became a factor with his length and size. Cassius Robertson was silent in that first half. A little crossover on Managa. Finds Muldrow, they need to get the big man going. That is big for the bench right now. Three ball, cuts it to three. Man, the River Lions can turn things around by just stringing together a couple of good offensive possessions here. Fraser Valley looking to grind it out like they always do. Merrick Klassen with the answer. Yeah, and if you want to get a run going, you got to play some defense. Tough shot by Merrick Klassen. That is Nelson. a momentum you know, My whole sucker. life, whether it's been teachers or Foul on Ashley. Or a reminder that anybody's saying. Fraser Valley down a man in the middle. So foul trouble will be something to watch as we move along here. That is uh, music to the ears of the Fraser Valley bench. That's Ashley's first foul. Up top, Muldrow fakes the handoff, finds Bell Haynes. Bell Haynes spins on Klassen, finds Anderson. He needed to find, get something through the rim, so mid-range game gets it to go. And Trey Bell Haynes has been their best player at getting any type of penetration. 
Cadugan. Driving on Bell Haynes. Kick out, Klassen. Klassen asking for Ashley to set a screen. Slips it, kick out. Olu Ashalu, no good. Menega skying for the rebound. Saves it, Kadugan over to Klassen. 10 on the shot clock, pass is picked off. The River Lions push it the other way off the turnover. Nice pass to Robertson. He thought about it, he took it, and he back rimmed it. Foul called down low on Anderson. I think when you're struggling, you need to run transition to score. I think settling for the three on that is part of what Niagara's been doing, settling. Bell Lifestyle Products is proud to provide natural health products for the elite athletes of the CBL, retired athletes, and weekend warriors alike. Never stop doing your thing. Men's health empowered by nature. Bell Lifestyle Products. Kadugan with the rock. 18 on the shot clock. Klassen working on Anderson. Klassen to Menega. Menega finds Kadugan. Kadugan cut off by Bell Haynes, but Junior Kadugan is starting to make a career off that shot right there. And he and he used his power to get to the middle there. And he didn't get to the middle without a plan. He got to the middle to look to shoot. Ooh, Anderson really sold that one well. But he's got to be careful because he got a warning for a flop earlier. So he's got to play on his basketball. They'll tee him up. Card. Hand off Bell Haynes. They're switching on D, and it's Muldrow finds himself open again. Got the first to go, can't get the second. Six point game. Fraser Valley continues to maintain their advantage. Klassen <laughs> bided his time. Ashalu. Just worked his way back out of some good positioning, but he takes Muldrow back in. That was an interesting offensive possession. Kotak Law, the official law firm of the CEBL Summer Series, knows these times have been hard for many Canadians. That's why they are donating $7,000 to the Canadian Mental Health Association, and they invite CEBL fans to join them. Visit cmha.ca today and join Nanish Kotak in supporting the mental health of Canadians from coast to coast. To Vivian forced it up. Yeah, 24 second shot clock violation. Nothing but glass. So that's the second of the first three and a half minutes of the third quarter, Joe. And that and that shot clock violation stops transition there. That was a good opportunity for Niagara to run in transition. So that's two. They need the stops if they're going to have any opportunity to get back in the game because it's a struggle right now. Kyle Johnson tried to sneak in before the buzzer, but couldn't do it. River Lions kick out Muldrow. Robertson pull up again. He's forced it just a little bit. Does not have the flow. Bell Haynes with 10 on the shot clock. Gets it back to Robertson. He's thinking, man, I got to get one to go at some point here, coach. Spin, jumper, another. He's just drawing too much iron today. And they're all tough shots. They're just tough shots when you've got no movement at all and you're stopping the ball. As soon as that skip was made, then you can create off of that. Oh, Ashley got banged up down low there. He's uh, calling his own sub over. Ryan Edgem checking in for the River Lions. Ashley checking out. Capers, very important player for this squad. Klassen now working on Bucard. That is a size mismatch, but he drops it off and Nix gets it to go. And when Merrick gets in the middle like that, he's looking for an interior pass. The fact that Niagara's not covering down, making it real easy. The lead is up to eight. Bell Haynes to Edgem. Kick out. Robertson, no good again. Niagara's lack of shooting the two is killing them. Capers. The one thing that's keeping the River Lions in this game is the fact that they are continually making stands defensively. We are just 
creeping up on the midway point of the third quarter. 41-33, the Fraser Valley Bandits sitting at two and two, looking to get above 500. Foul on Nix. So maybe Robertson getting himself to the line will get him going a bit. This is the first trip the entire game to the line for Niagara. So it tells you, it screams at you that they're, they're, they're settling. Even the last play where Ryan Edgem had that roll for the two and he looks to kick it out. I did not believe you when you said that. Jeff. I know you said it, but I figured no, in the last five minutes they must have got there. Robertson uh, gets him to the line, but he misses the first. Seven and nine for Fraser Valley. River Lions now one of two combined for the entire game. Vivier gets it over half court. Working on Bucard. Down low to Nix. Lots of contact. A late whistle, but it will go on Bucard. Niagara having lots of trouble with mid ball screen there. Sorry, he's on Edgar. Trying to cut this up. Go ahead. We got immediate timeout. Leads at seven. You are watching the CBL Summer Series on CBCSports.ca and the CBC Gemma. the Fraser Valley Bandits on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Bandits have to offer. Follow the Niagara River Lions on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the River Lions have to offer. Live at the Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario, the home of the 2021 Canada Summer Game. Knicks hits the first. Not only have has Fraser Valley continued to get to the stripe, they are hitting their shots when they are there, Joe. Yeah, doing a real good job on that mid pick and roll, rolling to the basket and getting found. Split a pair, but the offensive rebound ends up with Merrick Classic. Just a long board with no body on the guy. Classic, takes edge of kick out to Vivier. Oh, they're running out of time, got to get it up. Knicks did not beat the clock, they are calling it off. Oh, tough break for Fraser Valley because they did an absolute great job of finding somebody open there. But what a great offensive rebound by Vivier on that. Just out fought two guys. I think what Kyle Julius is saying to his bench, I didn't hear one of you guys count out the clock. So that is Daniel Mullings out there wearing number five. You will also see the Band-Aid over the left eye because he got split open. Blood on his jersey means he had to find a new one. Watson, no good from range. It's going to stay with Niagara. And, and Fraser Valley's good with Tyrone shooting that three. They're playing to, to Niagara's weaknesses. So these are open threes, but it's not your best shooters getting the threes. Bell Haynes, he has class and honor. Tyrone Watson. Goes along the baseline, kicked out of bounds by Capers. A two's a two. Trying to get cute baskets don't help you rather than just get easy, strong baskets. Bell Haynes inbounding on the baseline. Shot clock resets to 14. Tough pass, finds his way to Edgem. Watson, Mullings, 
No good. Offensive rebound, Bell Haynes to edge him for two. This team would be lost without Trey Bell Haynes. Absolutely, doing a great job of finding people, and they're a great rebound by a small guy. The lead is at six. Fraser Valley has maintained their advantage throughout this game. Klassen, again, no good. Edgem, rebound. Bell Haynes back the other way. Floats it to Watson. Watson wanted that ball because he had the smaller player on him. That is huge catch as Robertson from the land beyond. And a great catch by Tyrone Watson. Yes. He had Klassen on him, yelled for the ball, got it. Great extra pass. Class him back the other way now. Bounce pass to Nix. That is a beautiful pick and roll. Robertson now feeling it. Back to back money balls from Cassius Robertson. He's yes. at two. Closest they've been for a while, the River Lions. The Vivier down low, Capers. Edgem came for the double, pass out. Three is good, Knicks from the land beyond. And every time Niagara makes a little run, Fraser Valley's turned around with a big three. Bell Haynes taking class into the hole. No good, out of bounds. Knicks tried to sell it, and he could not. The 2021 CBL season ticket drive is well underway, and it will continue throughout the CBL summer series. You can visit the rattlers.ca or riverlions.ca to place your $50 deposit, receive a 12% discount, and secure your 2021 season tickets. It's Tyrone Watson to Ryan Edgem. No good, no one there to rebound. Bandits come away with it. The Vivian. Oh, Mullings got his hand in the passing lane, now taking it the other way. Daniel Mullings, no good. Tipping, no good from Pinson. And not enough rebounders on the court for Fraser Valley on that. These teams are going hard at it. Mullings loses it, but the River Lions are going to get it back. Yeah, and it looked like a situation where contact might cause the turnover there. The ball's like, you know what? I'm, I'm, get, I'm out of here, man. These, these two teams are just terrifying me a little bit. They are knocking me around this court. And I mean, it is really a slug them out affair here. Nice pass on the inbounds. Edge oh. lost his balance. It looked like he might have been shoved from behind, but no whistle. That went off of Edgem out of bounds. That's an amazing situation there where, where Ryan got pushed and, and there was no call on that. I think that was Olu Ashley with a veteran, uh, veteran move. Kadugan inbounding on the baseline. Floats it over to Ashley. Oh, all kinds of contact away from the ball. Oh. Watson gets wiped out by Ashley. Kadugan, fresh off the bench, pops it in from the land beyond. And every time Fraser Valley needs a big basket, they get it. Robertson. Nice passing from the River Lions. Edgem loses it, gets it back. Out of Capers, sorry, off of Capers. Out of bounds. A reminder to stick around following today's CEBL doubleheader for a special edition of CEBL Life, presented by Ward One Studios, a behind the scenes feature on Honey Badger's Guard, Dwayne Dolis. Randy Gway is checking back in for the first time in a long time for Dorian Pinson. Sorry, for Ryan Edgem. Henson working on Menega. No good. One pass, one attempt, and a miss. Rebound going the way of Fraser Valley. Nice little Fraser Valley here. They got an eight point lead. They get to add to this double digits. It'll feel like a 20 point lead just because of the pace of the game. Ashley working on Blaze. Kick out. Johnson gets to the baseline. No good. Capers battling. 
Mullings for it, and they say it's going to be Riverline's ball with under a minute to go here in the third, still an eight-point lead for the Fraser Valley Bandits. Mullings down to Watson, working in the low block. Gets it to go, plus the foul, and that gets the River Lions bench up. Strongest take of the game for the River Lions there. No surprise, it came from Tyrone Watson. With 41 seconds to go here, you got to look at Fraser Valley is going to play two for one, try to get a quick one up. I think they're going to just run solid offense. Watson banged that one around and in. Leads down to five. The Bandits with the rock. 16, 16 second difference, game clock, shot clock. Bandits going to play it straight up. Menega waves off, waves off Kadugan. Ashley sets the screen on Bell Haynes. He gets it back down low. He's going to have to rush it. He finds Kadugan. Smart move. And Junior Kadugan banged it home. Big time shot. The lead's at eight. That's what Kadugan does. Yes, sir. Bell you Haynes. get late in the clock. Five to go. Bell Haynes. Smart move. Can't finish. Tip in. Not there. The lead is up to eight. Fraser Valley continues to control this game. We are heading into the fourth quarter. Stay with us on cbcsports.ca and the CBC Gemma. Elamending is upon us, and they take the timeout to set the target score. up into the air, gets it to go! Not there, Bucard in the corner for three. Dion Bucard at the buzzer, drains it, and the Niagara River Lions get out of here with a 93-92 victory. <laughs> Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products. So you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Coltac Law. Good things happen to those people who work hard. And Junior Cadugan, late in the clock, gets it, knocks it in. But he's been working and deserved the break. I think that's what the basketball gods once told me. Cadugan, 12 points, four assists, the biggest number that jumps out there. Zero turnovers. Ashley to Cadugan. The lead is at eight. This is a Fraser Valley Bandits game. This is exactly what they want to do to you. And Jahens Menega with a big time shot from range. That's his first made three pointer of the game. Now one of five. But the decision there to lay off for Niagara just bad personnel decision. That pushes the lead to 11. Cassius Robertson got it going a bit in the third but he short arms that one. 
And if Niagara tries to get back in the game with just shooting threes, it's over. They've got to play defense and chip away if they want any chance of playing. Ashley, Kadugan, running off the screen. Kadugan, directing traffic. Three is no good. Basketball gods weren't going to allow a bank in from the baseline, that's for sure. Robertson working the rock. Pinson flashes up. Robertson picked up his dribble, finds Mullings. Mullings, he's someone who will take it to the rim and he gets it to go. Yeah. And so what Niagara has to do is chip away, play some defense, then now they've got to play defense and they just, just score if they can. Take the two, don't be rushing for a three. Kadugan to Menega, Menega. No good, hit the first, could not get the second to go. Bell Haynes is fouled. He's pushing it hard for the River Lions, that's for sure. He's pushing it hard and has advantage. And then Randy Glaze decides to step up and try to set a ball screen rather than going to the rim and have a full advantage. Decisions are just complicating the issue for any try to come, any type of comeback for Niagara. Dugan now goes to the bench. A couple of reinforcements for the Bandits. Called for the carry. Klassen back in the game. Turnovers become bigger now in the fourth quarter. Because you take any opportunity you have of coming back, having a, a, a turnover just based on a technical situation. Mullings and Classen getting I'm, after it a little bit over there. I'm amazed Fraser Valley is a team that played last night. And right now, they're the team that looks like they've got more in the tank. The officials coming together saying that Merrick Classen is the instigator of all this. And they got Classen on it sporting. Oh, warning. They're saying that he's the instigator out there. It's always the quiet ones you gotta look out for. Eight on the shot clock. Classic. And we got a back-to-back -back carry call, one on both sides. I think maybe that's the third call, third time we've had that call the entire series. <laughs> Bell Haynes working on classic. All kinds of contact away from the ball. Ashalu almost took out the printer. And that's... The next Rattlers game is August 4th, sorry. The next Fraser Valley Bandits game is August 5th, taking on the Guelph Nighthawks, 5 p.m. Eastern. And then the River Lions, next game, August 4th against the Blackjacks, and that could be absolutely huge, depending on the result of this one. The Bandits are up nine with 7.30 to go. Bell Haynes. Has to pull it. He did not get it off in time. Niagara has too many guys on the court not looking to score. It's kind of funny. Grandy gets the ball in the paint, never looks at the rim, looks to kick it out. And there you got a substitution in for him. Lucard checking back in for Pinson. Sam Muldrow also in the game. So we have the starting five, except Daniel Mullings in there as well for the River Lions. Classic. Probing the team. Bounce pass into Ashalu, and you hear Coach Vic Razzo saying, how long, how long? Ashalu spending a couple seconds in there, had a little smile for the bench on and his way up. And did a great job of getting to Sam Muldrow's body, and with the reverse layup, not letting Sam extend to, sh to block it. Muldrow from range, no good when he can't hit a three. 
It's a big hole to fill for the River Lions. At 6'9", you got to get a little bit more from a guy than just three-point shooting. Classic. Behind the bat to Ashley. He thought about it. Finds Klassen again. Klassen. Gets swallowed up. ashley has got a trigger from range. Oh! That would have been interesting. Did not beat the shot clock to Vivier. And we got a timeout for the River Lions. Listening to Kyle Julius over there, he wasn't upset about the shot that Ashley took. He actually said, take the first one, please. It was the second one that ended up in the air ball. Yeah, and, and, and he's absolutely right. You know, that was late in the clock, like, like juniors three. When it's late in the clock, it's the easiest shot to make because there, you can't do you can't be wrong shooting the ball yep. like so you know that that in itself is a little bit more confident because i can't go wrong in it and you see it all the time late clock shots go in because the shooter just oh, i've got to do it there's no choice yep. and bang and all of a sudden it's a confident shot 11 point lead joe 629 to go we are now 229 away from elam ending time again the first whistle inside of four minutes is when we'll get to the elam ending but so if you're the River Lions, what are you trying to do right now, stuck 11? Well, you've got to just defend and score. And score means get to the free throw line. Score means get a two. Score means that you don't have to shoot a three. But that's been their MO. They, they, and, and Fraser Valley saying, OK, we'll let your non-shooters shoot threes. And they are winning that battle. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, a lot of similarities, the difference being the three-point shooting, Fraser Valley getting more to go from range. They're shooting about the same amount of them. And then again, it's the rebounding, plus nine for Fraser Valley. That really is a difference when you look at the stats. And yeah, and the, the free throws come because you attack the basket. You know, and that's, and the offensive rebound, just second chance opportunities. Fraser Valley matching their largest lead of the game at 11. Mullings to Bucard, Bell Haynes. Mullings running off the ball. Vivier has quite a lot of weight differential on Mullings. Mullings have to battle for it. I think they're going to call that one on Classic. It's amazing that you're posting up Daniel Mullings and you haven't got anybody to dive to the basket. You know, you've got to give him a play because Fraser Valley hasn't taken guys out of the real estate, they're staying there. So you don't have to be visible at the three. You just have to be visible to the passer. Get into your range where you can score easy. Varian Nix checking in for Olu Ashalu. Robertson, Muldra, back to Robertson. Four on the shot clock, tough shot, no good. Rebound capers, Fraser Valley making everything tough on Niagara. The Vivian. Gonna back down Bell Haynes, gets into the lane. Ooh, that was smooth from Malcolm DeVivier. That was smooth, that was physical, that was determined. Klassen and Bell Haynes come together to make some contact. Ricard moves into his office, gets fouled. And it's a rare trip to the charity strike for the River Lions. And you're looking even like Sam Muldrow coming off the court right now. Looks tired. And Fraser Valley played last night. They just 24 hours and they're coming back here and nobody on that court has that type of body language. They're just, you know, Olu played hard yesterday and hard today. Card misses the first. The River Lions bench, very quiet. Card splits a pair. Lead is still at 12 for the Bandits. Again, the River Lions, if they lose this game, they are in trouble. They're gonna need some help. Ooh, Klassen misses a wide open layup. Robertson. Drive, kick out of bounds. One thing when you're behind, you're playing defense. You can't give up those twos. You can't, every guy, we got guys covering, Magler got guys covering the perimeter when someone's got an easy drive to the basket. Capers. 
class and a little bit of a mess here of this possession for the Bandits. Class and looking for cutters, can't find them. Has to take it at Watson into the corner. No good. And to Vivier, offensive rebound battle, and they get it. The Bandits continue to win the 50-50 balls. I don't even know if I call them 50-50 if they're an even attack. Oh, Bucard. Huge chase down block, much needed right there. That could have been a backbreaker for the River Lions. Mullings loses it, and the Bandits are moving. They're running. Classic, no good. Back and forth, Bucard, rebound. Bell Haynes, Watson fakes the handoff, spins into the middle, no good. Mullings gets hit hard with 4.13 left. So Nix called for the personal foul. And then Mullings got a tech. So Mullings got fouled. This has been an issue with Niagara this entire stretch after game one. You know, uh, just losing focus, losing attention and doing more talking than playing. Mullings wasn't loud and demonstrative. I think the difference is with a dead silent, fanless arena, you can hear everything. Jason, you're down. You're down 13. You need to come back. One of the ways of coming back is don't give them the ball and let them shoot a technical. Yep. The one positive being at least they weren't in Elam ending time. <laughs> At 4.13, the yeah. next whistle could bring us there. Absolutely. Mullings and Kadugan have a little chat. Those two came up together. Mullings hit them both. So a net plus one. The Bandits with the rock. They have been in control of this game from tip to now. Menega down low, Ashlu, I think they're gonna call Olu. Or are they calling it on Bucard? Bucard, oh, oh, oh. And they did call it on Bucard. So we are heading into Elam ending time. The math is easier now. Nine plus 61. Or the, you got two free throws coming. Oh, good point. Sorry, you got me. Well, if the well the foul wasn't a shooting oh, foul, it was shooting on the foul. baseline. So 70 is our target score. So when we get to Elam time, what happens is nine points are added to the team that's leading. So right now our target score is 70. And your goal is to get to 70 or, or over that. Um, and that's the winner. There's going to be a game-winning basket. It's going to be a free throw, a layup, or a dunk. Now, a couple things that come into play there now is after a timeout, and both teams right now have two timeouts because Fraser Valley had three but will lose one. You can only take two timeouts into mm -hmm. Elam time. So you can call a timeout. You can get the ball in the front court or the back court. The other thing that you will happen is substitutions. You can make a substitution after you've been scored upon. So those are real big things. And then there's some technical stuff about reaching out of bounds and fouling on inbounds plays. These are all things that happen in FIBA under two minutes, the CBL has decided to bring it down. And I think when it comes down to it, I think the other way to look at it, in order for the River Lions to pull off this win, they are going to have to outscore their opponents 20 to eight. They're gonna to have to go on to a 20 to eight run. The, the max that they would be allowed to allow is eight. The average target score so far through Elam ending at this summer series has been 90.6. And the arrow doesn't come into play on that play because we, we start Elam time where the play just ended. River Lions have been able to trim into the rebounding battle just a little bit off the inbounds. Menega, no good. Almost another and it, wow. So the one time they don't get an offensive rebound, the River Lions end up fouling the Bandits. The Bandits have been able to win the battle on the glass, and right there they force a foul. 
Yeah, and, and Vivier's done such a great job on offensive rebounds, off free throws, off shots. He gets elevated and he, he stays powerful. Kadugan, inbound, Menega, Ashley, Kadugan. He's asking for Menega, just six on the shot clock. Out of bounds again, there will only be five on the shot clock for the Bandits to execute. Frazier Bell has been real good with short clocks. Kadugan, once again, Junior Kadugan owns that part of the lane. So short clock, they don't, Niagara doesn't recognize it. Could have come with a double, could have got the ball out of his hands. Bell Haynes. Been the one consistent factor throughout this one for the River Lions. His three is no good. And that's not a bad three because Fraser Valley's packed it in and, and he had Olu on him. The Vivier. Kadugan takes the handoff, goes the other way. The Vivier, who has been good in so many different parts of the game here today. Ashaloo turns the corner. No, nope. Great, great nope. defensive situation. Can't Taking argue. the ball off the rim. He's on the rim, you're allowed to take it, but Mullings can't get it to go. Kadugan hits the floor. Kadugan back the other way. Taking it into the lane is Maniga. Kick out Ashalu. Kadugan once again with the rock. Ashalu loses it, and it's got to go to the River Lions. Went off Olu Ashalu's hands out of bounds. Yeah. Great play earlier by Guillaume Bucard getting that ball off the rim. Just funny that the initial reaction is always like, that's a goaltend. <laughs> Bell Haynes into the corner, Bucard. No good, ball bounced around. River Lions have not been able to get the bounce or the roll today. Kadugan a little out of control and it's gonna go back to River Lions way. And amazing that, you know, we talked about early in the game playing with urgency and it feels, still feels like Niagara's not playing with urgency. Yep. And it's Elam time. Once again, target score is 70. River Lions still have yet to get a basket in Elam time. The Bandits just need to close this one out. Bukar, Mullings, drive, foul is called. Mullings has been asking for a whistle for the entire game and finally gets himself to the line. And if you even look at the River Lions bench there, there's no excitement, there's no, there's no lift at it. Unfortunately, they're just playing through this. Mullings shooting actually his third free throw in this final five minutes of the fourth. Capers tried to knock that one off, but it was already down. 63-52, 70 points the target score. Kadugan to Capers. Bucard just all over Capers. Great defense, but better offense. Great. Going to his weak hand there, showed everyone that he's got a good right hand. Good finish, high off the bat, off the glass. Edgem elevates, can't get it to go. And he made the mistake there of trying to get fouled. You got to go to the rim and finish. The foul's a reward. But when you, go, when you go to the rim like that and you look to get fouled, you get yourself in trouble. We mentioned it previously the one thing that we can definitely say the way that the officials have been letting them play has definitely worked in the favor of Fraser Valley but at the same time you kind of make your own breaks don't you Joe absolutely and and Fraser Valley has set the tone and the and and that's the level that the officiating's come at they haven't complained they don't get they get back on defense 
where we're fighting and looking for excuses. You know, you can't let, at this time of the series, you can't look for excuses. And even situations like that, you got an easy layup, go get two, and you're looking to get fouled. That's not good basketball. That's, that's just trying to be style, and I think, and it's just a bad decision. They have imposed their will on this game from beginning to end. Yeah, it really, we were kind of waiting for a momentum shift at some point. It just never came. The River Lions' uh, three-point shooting has continued to struggle. They continue to lose the rebounding battle. While the Fraser Valley Bandits, there has been zero drop-off from this team coming into this summer series. A lot of people didn't really know a lot of the players on the roster, obviously brand new from last year outside of Merrick Klassen. Obviously a new head coach to the league as well, but for those that did know Kyle Julius and the people he was bringing to this summer series, you knew that they were gonna compete. And that's kind of what this summer series is all about. Cassius Robertson from downtown, and that cuts it to 10. They're still 15 away from the target score. And a good set after a timeout there. But they need stops, and this is one of the, this has been their biggest problem. A stop and a defensive rebound. See, Olu's working his way in there, and Niagara, in this case, Edgem, allows him to then tries to fight after. You've got to work early. You've got to work early, put pressure on the ball. Because if you react like that, Olu's just going to win. He's the vet. Early work, you hear about it all the time. The battle inside the post is always for real estate. Ashley has been very, very strong from the charity stripe in this game. There you go. They are within a three-pointer from ending this game. River Lions have a long way to go. Bell Haynes, stop and go, take, no whistle. Robertson with a sliding Cadugan going behind him. And Cadugan's wide open, taking the easy two. And they are just one point away now. Cadugan hit the floor diving for that loose ball, didn't get it, but found himself wide open on the other end. Mullins. Got hit hard by Ashlew. He'll find his way back to the line. Mullins just playfully runs into Ashlew. I think he felt uh, felt that Olu forearm. But here we are. No matter what, we got an opportunity to win this game on anything. Yep. Kyle Julia is saying that they want a timeout off the made free throw. Wants to draw something up. Oh, it missed them both. Inadvertent whistle. Jump ball. So the possession arrow goes away of the river lines. Those were two bad free throws he took there. Eh? It almost looked like there was, even the mental part of that was gone. Yep. Bucard, River Lions just need a miracle here down the stretch in Elam ending time. No good, Mulling sky for the rebound. Bucard, I'm trying, has there been an and one? For the River Lions, I mean, they have not been able to finish through the contact that they did get. As you mentioned, they didn't get to the free throw line until late in the second half. It's one of the few times that they've even got to the offensive boards. Bucard. At the line. Bucard is one of the better free throw shooters for the River Lions, again. They are still 15 points away from the target score, while the next basket of any kind will end this game and give the Fraser Valley Bandits the win. So Coach Julius doesn't call the timeout, but uses a substitution opportunity there. 
where now he's going to put Tavarian Nix, who's been very good this game, into the game. Riverline's very active on the first of two free throw attempts. Yeah, that's a little bit of fake toughness, I think, eh? Because uh, you got to shoot two. Made and both, Kyle Julius, I think now will get his long anticipated timeout. He has wanted this one for a while, but the inadvertent whistle threw them off the first time around. So now what Julius will be able to draw up with his team only needing the one point, you figure it's going to be something going to the rim, Joe. Yeah, and they've done a great job of that dribble weave that they've run, and they've moved the basketball to try to go to the rim. But they don't, they don't go to the rim just to score. They space out after it, but they do a good job of getting to the basket. Good timeout. It's getting the front. He'll have the choice. He has the choice because he's got the lead. He doesn't have to take it in the front court at 14 seconds. He can choose to take it in the back court. But because we're in Elam time, he might just say, no, I'll take it in the front court yep. because clock's not a factor. And as we've seen time and time again, the Bandits continue to own the glass and the offensive rebounding battle has been very much on their side through most of the game. But taking a look now, the River Lions have been able to figure that out as it goes on. I just think it's a matter of Niagara. It just took way too long to be able to get things together. And again, the missing of their three-point shooting has just been glaring for this club. And it's not just missing the threes, it's settling for threes. Yes. And that's not offense. If you're going to come out here and have a three-point competition, that's what you do at, you know, at the carnival. Yes. You know, basketball is not meant to be a three-point shooting competition. You can use the three. It's a great weapon, but you got to be able to use it in your offense. So let's see what they drew up here. 14 on the shot clock. The Bandits with a chance at the win. Oh, an inbound and the foul. I think the play that was drawn up worked. Yeah, back screen on it, and somebody didn't communicate. That was a very well drawn up play. It would have been nicer if, it, if, it, if they converted on that. But instead, it will be Malcolm DeVivier who executed that inbounds play to perfection, drawn up by Kyle Julius, now finds his way to the line, only needing to hit one of these two free throws to put it on ice. So the play successful no matter which way you look at it yep. then. We may have to cover our mics if he misses the second. Welcome to Vivian. Game on the line, it's good. Kyle Julius drew it up perfectly coming out of the timeout. It was executed to perfection. A free throw ends it. The Fraser Valley Bandits improve to three and two, guaranteeing themselves at least a spot in the CEBL Summer Series playoffs. And beyond whatever was done on there on the court, the one thing that I know the Bandits will be happy about they have now set a record for the fewest points allowed in a CEBL game. Originally, it was 62 points, so they, bet, they bettered that by five, holding the River Lions to just five points for a Fraser Valley Bandits team who hang their hat on their defense. That is something outstanding for them to be able to see. And joining Amy Audibert right now is Junior Cadugan. Amy, take it away. Uh, thanks, Jason. Junior, if you told me this morning that Fraser Valley was going to play in the lowest scoring Elon target score of the summer series, I wouldn't have believed you. But here you are at 16 points. You led your team. How did you guys grind that one out? Man, you know, we stayed patient and we executed, man. You know, we we're having problems going too fast, rushing things, and, you know, we had to break down the film and, you know, really uh, take what coach was giving us and execute the game plan, man. Slow down a little bit, pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> So this pushes you to three wins, so that means you've clinched a playoff berth. And while you don't coast in your next game, does it alleviate any pressure going into that Guelph? No, we're the underdog and we're going to stay hungry and that's just it. We're going to go to the back to the hotel, take care of our bodies and watch film and get ready for next game. I know you guys have a great fan base at home that is going to be excited to see you continue and playing on in summer man, series. Shout out Fraser Valley, man. BC, yeah. let's get it. All right. Thanks, Junior. Congratulations. Right. We'll go Thank back you. to you guys.
Thank you so much, Amy. What a grind them out, battle it out, whatever you want to call it, game, Joe. Fraser Valley really executed their game plan despite losing their leading score. They were a team today. They played team defense. They stayed on the plan. And we saw two very good basketball games that were determined by defense. And the defense took the offense from the other team out completely. The game was won before a basket was scored just because the defense was so good in this game and the previous game with Ottawa. We had two great games here today as we head into the home stretch of the CEBL Summer Series tomorrow. We have just one game on the docket. We got Guelph and Edmonton, two of the top teams in the Summer Series, Joe. This could be the first place game tomorrow yeah. because yeah. if Edmonton wins, they guarantee first place. And if Guelph beats them, then they both go to four and two and Guelph has the tiebreaker on them. So tomorrow could be for first place and if, at least be in a real good situation for second. So big game tomorrow. It's, it's the only game on the docket, but it's going to be the biggest game so far in the series. Sean Woodley and Javon Shepard will be back for that one. Of course, Amy Otterbert will be here as she's been here for every other game. And we have Jason Tom and Joe Razzo signing off after two games here today. There's only five games left in the round robin of the CEBL Summer Series. Make sure you stay with us on CBC Sports and on the CBC Gem app. And stay tuned because right now coming your way is CEBL Life, a profile on Dwayne Nota. Stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dwayne Notice and you know, my whole life, whether it's been teachers or commentators or just anybody saying, you know, put on notice or just take notice or all those like cliche sayings, I just want, want to take it and make it my own. When I go through times where I feel like I'm being overlooked because of politics and basketball or where I feel like I'm not getting the the kind of respect that I deserve. I just, you know, let the game do the talking and I just let everybody take notice. Crazy how this trip is. Woo. I went through a very, a very, you know, low moment in my life where I was like self-doubt. Um, my confidence was gone and my passion and love for the game of basketball became conditional. It didn't even become unconditional anymore. I just, I was so done with the sport. I was so done with, you know, playing, playing the game that I love. And um, it took a lot for me to get out that, that rut. And that's why I'm just very excited about the opportunity to play basketball again. So, um, you know, I thank the Raptors 905, the G League, for giving me the opportunity. Team Canada has always been there for me. And then now, you know, the summer series, I'm, I'm continuing to just kind of elevate my game and elevate my status and, you know, get back to that point where I used to be, where, you know, mentally, um, you know, I, I was where, who I thought I was. So now I'm just happy at that, that I get to do that. I've always been big when it comes to just knowledge. So I love to just, you know, learn as much as I can. I like to play devil's advocate. So I'm just fortunate that basketball allows me to meet different people. I want to be able to, you know, hopefully be a broadcaster one day or hopefully do something that, you know, is involved around that aspect of the game. So I can always be talking about the game that I love. But, you know, my interests, you know, stem from reading. You know, I love music. I'm a big 90s nostalgic guy. I love uh, just watching movies. I probably, if I didn't play basketball, I'd be like a movie critic or something within the the film of Hollywood or anything like that. I studied film in school as well. I recognize that I'm more than an athlete and I've been fortunate enough to have a platform that's allowed me to educate myself, the ones closest to me, but more importantly, you, the community. Honey Badgers, I came to them with the idea of auctioning off my jersey from last year. Police brutality, social injustices, and blatant racism needs to end. And that's why I want to partner up with the Hamilton Honey Badgers and carry this idea that's allowing us to take action. We uh, raised over a thousand dollars in donations to different Black Lives Matter movements and organizations and um, I thank the Honey Badgers, Hamilton Honey Badgers, for allowing me to do that. Using basketball as a platform to um, educate other people and also um, just kind of elevate what we're doing in terms of just trying to get everybody to understand that we're all to be respected um, no matter what race or culture you're from and I love the fact that the game's allowing me to do that. The hashtag race is not in our game is I think it's a it's a really good concept you know we're using you know the current form which is social media um, hashtags and stuff like that so racism is not in our game uh, 
I think it's going to go a long way and it's going to be, you know, something that could stick into people's heads and it's going to be a common phrase, a common hashtag that will be used throughout the tournament in the Summer Series and hopefully that will be, you know, something that could be committed towards the rest of, you know, the CBL's life that, <laughs> that racism is on our game. Good evening and welcome inside Meridian Center here in downtown St. Catharines, Ontario. We've got a pair of one-on-one -on -one teams squaring off tonight. Both Hamilton and Edmonton drop their openers. Let's go, yo. Let's compete, yo. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Here's Notice driving. Tries to finish lefty and does. Tough finish, Wayne yeah. Notice. No, but he can't be stopped. Here's Notice, looking to take the lead. He slips there. You'd really hate to see this for one of the stars of the tournament so far. A situation like this is, is so unfortunate. Again, we hope there's nothing serious. All the best to Dwayne Notice of the Honey Badgers, hoping he's okay there. We still have a basketball game to finish here. 82-79, the Edmonton Stingers lead. blood, sweat, and tears into it, whether you've been through adversity or persevered through any type of, you know, difficult times, you want everybody to understand that you're to be respected and, you know, you're very serious about your craft. Again, I uh, wish all the best along with Javon and Amy to Duane Notice. Hopefully that he's okay there and maybe we'll see him again in this tournament, maybe not, but either way, he gave us a show today with 23 points. Way you notice the Canadian and Raptors 905 member 